So um, I will tell you about uh, uh, how do we use precision spectroscopy to study uh, molecular collisions and interactions. Um, <coughs> so I will uh, start from the experiment. Uh, so we um, we have room temperature molecules uh, inside a super high finesse uh, um, optical cavity, and then we um, lock uh, our laser very tightly to the cavity. Uh, the length of the cavity is stabilized uh, to uh, some reference stable laser, and all the frequencies in the setup uh, are referenced to, to, to the primary frequency standard. Uh, and now this is so this is like beyond the intention my intention for this talk to in detail describe the, the experimental techniques uh, but all I want to say for this uh, in, in the context of this uh, collisional studies um, uh, so, so there are like two features of this experimental setup uh, so one thing is that we have here some extra modulators and they uh, allow us to inject into the cavity two uh, um, orthogonal uh, polarization and we use one of the of the beam to very tightly lock the laser to the cavity and then we use the second polarization uh, uh, to make our spectroscopy and the thing is that this second beam is ultra stable stable with respect to the cavity uh, so so we can tune uh, the second laser um, mm, around the uh, cavity modes so this is like a one feature and another feature is this super high uh, finesse and these two things uh, uh, allow us to uh, measure the shape of molecular transition uh, with almost a negligible apparatus uh, experimental apparatus uh, <coughs> and this is a key thing for us because uh, in our approach the, uh, the information about molecular collisions and interactions are stored in collision perturbed uh, mm, shapes of molecular transition. So that is so. So, so this is how it looks uh, very briefly on the experimental side. And uh, from the theory perspective, uh, mm, so we start like from the standard uh, mm, approach. So uh, we we consider for a given molecular system a quantum scattering problem. We take uh, time independent uh, Schrodinger equation. Uh, we determine the scattering as matrix. And, and, and here is the difference. So, people, what people typically do, they calculate the, uh, the elastic or inelastic cross section and determine the scattering amplitude. And uh, uh, what we calculate, we calculate a so called uh, generalized spectroscopic cross section. So, this, this cross section really tells us how the optical coherence. Okay, sorry. Th thanks a lot. <clears throat> so this these cross sections uh, really tells us how the optical coherence is uh, perturbed under a collision. So here you can here you can see that we have uh, an extra parameter uh, uh, in our expression, which tell us what is the tensor order of the transition. And uh, there is also another difference in like uh, ordinary cross sections. Uh, so this is like. Uh, rank of the molecular uh, velocity ten tensor. So this, this, this parameter tells us how much the speed or velocity is changed uh, under the collision. And then after doing some averaging, we obtain the rates, uh, which gives us information about uh, the different uh, collisional effects. So there's like the basic collisional effects is like simple Lorentzian broadening and the shift uh, of the line. So this is like a very brief scheme, how to calculate this, uh, Collisional effects from first principles, right? So we know that uh, if, if the, that the transition is broadened and shifted due to collisions, and here is the scheme how to cal calculate this from first principles. But, but then, then there are more sophisticated effects that has to be uh, or can be considered. So first of all, uh, uh, for many systems, these quantities depends on the uh, on the collision energy, and this leads to inhomogeneous broadening or, or narrowing of, of, of the structure. And there is even uh, one, more thanks, uh, one more fancy thing. So, um, so this is so-called frequency of the optical velocity changing collisions. And the physics behind this is, is following that so if, if the laser excites my molecule, uh, then uh, for some molecular systems, uh, it turns out that 
the optical the optical computer can survive that at least. And then what we have to be able to what we need to do uh, on the theory side, we need to be able to uh, describe uh, how the, the flows of the uh, optical coherence uh, between different velocity classes under the solution. And this is this is the rate for for, for, for this process. This is a complex number because uh, at the same time, so the velocity is changed, and at the same time, uh, the internal st state can be uh, can be perturbed. Uh, okay, but this is not uh, th th this is not the end of, of the story. So this is like a midpoint of our calculations because uh, this adjusts the rates of the collisional effects. And now, uh, so the, the, the physical system is following. We have an ensemble of, of molecules. La laser generates optical coher coherence in, in our uh, system. Uh, and this is this part of the transport relaxation equation. But then there are collisions which somehow damp or perturb this optical excitation. And uh, what we and our goal is to determine this H function, which is simply uh, a velocity distribution of an optical coherence uh, for, for the ensemble. So we shine the laser. Laser generates optical coherence. There are collisions, and this uh, optical coherence leaks out to different velocity classes. And we want to calculate this stable, uh, stable, stable state uh, solution. Mm. And the interesting part uh, uh, in this equation is this collisional operator, of course. Uh, and within this, 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 this several terms, the, the, the fancy one is the operator rel related to the velocity changing collisions. And it has a structure similar to the uh, Boltzmann collisional operator. So, so in the end, this, this simply looking equation is like a multidimensional integral equation. And once we solve it, uh, uh, we can directly determine the collision perturb shape of molecular transition. So, um, right, so this is like a very short introduction to, to, to our methodology, and here are the results. So, uh, so for this exa example, I took uh, experimental results from our partners from Hefei, China, and uh, Grenoble, uh, France. So they measure, uh, so we considered at the, at the beginning the simplest possible system, this is helium per tarp H2, uh, and we measured the different lines. And now the black points are experimental uh, data, and the red curves are our theory. And here you can see that we, and the important thing is that we superimposed uh, our ab initio calculations on the experimental spectra without fitting any coll collisional line shape parameter. And this is for, for the this is the first time when uh, people achieved uh, such uh, high accuracy. So we like agree with. Uh, experiment uh, at the sub percent uh, mm, at the sub percent level, and furthermore, we can uh, we can now treat this as a tool for testing, for instance, uh, mm, calculations of quantum chemistry. So we took uh, different uh, potential energy surfaces available in the literature. And you can clear, clearly use this precision spectroscopy to value to say which potential is is, is the most accurate. Uh, we can s say also. Uh, a lot, not only about interaction, but also about the collisional processes. So, uh, for instance, uh, there's another reason why we choose molecular hydrogen. So, molecular hydrogen is not only simple, but also it has a huge rotational constant. And this means that it is, uh, the inelastic collisions are, are, are very rare. So, this major contribution to, to line broadening is very small. And we can see uh, the higher order uh, the, the more interesting collisional processes. And it turns out that to describe properly the shapes uh, for this uh, particular system, we need to consider six uh, different collisional effects. So this is like simply broadening and shift, uh, but also the inhomogeneous broadening and narrowing due to uh, the dependence of these parameters on the collision energy. And also this effect related, which I mentioned before, related to velocity changing uh, to the flows between different velocity classes uh, in the optical coherence velocity distribution. And uh, what, what I show, uh, yeah, of course I don't have a time to dis discuss in detail uh, all the pictures, but uh, the, the main message of this picture is that I need to really take into account all these six collisional uh, effects to reach this sub percent accuracy. If I turn off any of them, then the uh, consistency between theory and experiment drops like by order of magnitude or, or even more. Yeah, so 
there is a small delay between clicking and what I see here. And that's why I'm, I'm confused. Uh, so we, we made a huge effort to validate uh, this methodology for this particular Helium H2 system. So we uh, performed several experiments in our uh, labs in Torun. Uh, we took other data from other partners. And we are really uh, um, convinced that we can reproduce the experimental data at the sub-person level. And now we have uh, an ambition to contribute to this huge uh, spectroscopy community. So there are like, so this is the most widely used uh, molecular spectra database. There are like 20,000 registered users uh, for this database. And uh, uh, our ambition is to populate this database with this ab initio, uh, ab initio data. So we started from with these four simplest systems, which are relevant for gas giant atmosphere studies and also for exoplanet uh, atmosphere studies. And we, uh, 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 early this year, we really like uh, made a large step towards this goal. So we populated the entire da database for for this uh, for this isotopolog combination. Uh, so to give you a feeling, how like the, what is the structure of the of this problem? So we have like a few thousand uh, transitions. And for each, tr each transition, we need to uh, report the, the rates for all these six collisional effects. And for every temperature, nearly from nearly zero Kelvin to like a thousand Kelvin. So th there is no way you can do it like experimentally to populate such a database. And so the, 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 the data was like very, uh, only few lines were populated. And we immediately populated entire database with extremely high accuracy for all temperatures, right? So this is a huge progress. And like a few days ago, we published uh, the data set for HD helium and the work for uh, other isotopologues in, in progress. <clears throat> and now we have like ambition to, to go further. And there is much larger community uh, which works not of the, not, the, the, not the planetary atmosphere, but Earth atmosphere related to pollution monitoring, uh, climate change, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, and so we want to uh, address the same problem, but for more important molecular systems. So we started with, with CO and two. Uh, and to give you a feeling, feeling how much more uh, extensive computationally this system is, here you can see the vertical axis is, is not really, but almost the number of partial waves that contribute to the collision as a function of energy. And you can see that for CO molecule, it is like order of magnitude as a number of, of, of partial waves we need to consider uh, uh, larger. Then we need to consider that N2 has its own rotational structure, so we have to repeat calculations for every state of the perturber. And finally, uh, the rotational constant uh, of N2 is, is much smaller, so the, 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 the basis is, is larger. But, but uh, despite that, uh, we mainly, uh, our, our student Hubert Dijvak, managed to, to finish the calculations for it, and we reached a really excellent agreement with, with all the available experimental data. So this is this is a single line, but but we demonstrated the the, methodolo the methodology works, and we are on the good way to 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 to, to start populating the database. Uh, uh, then we do the same for O2 N2. For uh, from theory point of view, O2 is interesting because uh, in the ground uh, state it has non-zero electronic spin. It's a triplet spin. It's inter uh, interesting from the collisional point of view, and. Uh, yeah, maybe I, I will go very quickly. So we we achieved a similar, uh, similarly well agreement. Uh, uh, it was just published in, in, in DCP. Uh, now we started uh, working with uh, important pollutant, pollutants for atmosphere, uh, hydrogen fluoride. Uh, we are getting prepared to uh, address other pollutants and other important uh, molecules for the uh, atmosphere. Uh, and I would like to take uh, advantage of, 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 of being here and advertised our uh, quantum scattering code. Uh, so uh, uh, we used to use uh, mold scat uh, quantum scattering code, but uh, recently we completely switched to our own code, uh, mainly developed by, by, by Hubert Dijvak. Uh, yeah, and probably I don't have time to discuss this in detail, but this is related to Krzysztof talk. Uh, we, 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 uh, uh, ten minutes ago. Uh, so, uh, in parallel to these collisional studies, uh, we also use the same experimental approach to determine determine the structure or vibrational structure in molecular hydrogen. 
So we, we, we are focused on G2 isotopologs, but it doesn't matter really for the comparisons. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe I, I can, Maybe I can di direct you to the poster which will be presented during this poster session. All I will, all I want to mention is that, uh, in the context of Shishnev plot, is that our comparison with Shishnev calculations uh, valid validates the quantum electrodynamic correction for molecules at fifth mini 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 meaningful degree. Yeah, now we are like progressing on the experimental side toward moving all this methodology to the cryogenic regime. So we are, sorry. Yeah, so we are like developing a, a cryogenic uh, ultra high finesse cavity. Uh, so the, the cavity will be placed, placed in this cryogenic uh, uh, vacuum chamber. Uh, here are some mechanical dampers to damp the vibrations of the pumps and cryocooler. Uh, and uh, it, it hasn't been launched yet, but we already tested some part of it. For instance, this is our design of the cryogenic uh, piezo uh, actu actuator of the middle position uh, that we will use in our cryogenic cavity. Recently, we tested that it really works as, as it's designed. So we lose some like piezo efficiency, but as designed, it is enough for us to clean the cavity. Uh, uh, and here you can see some, this for me, super exciting picture about uh, assembling all this cryogenic setup for this cryogenic uh, vacuum chamber when the high finesse cavity will be placed, the cryogenic dampers of the vibra vibrations. So we hope it will work. Here, here there is this interesting context of molecular hydrogen study. So it is quite counterintuitive for people from the cold uh, atoms and molecules community uh, because uh, here the masses are completely different. And for molecular hydrogen, the cold re regime starts around one Kelvin. So if we can like work at few Kelvin, then already we are like not yet, but almost in the cold uh, regime. So I mean, there will be like three or four uh, partial waves contributing a lot. Okay, so that's my team. Uh, this is Frank Thibault who, from Rennes, France, who very closely collaborate with. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have time for, for questions. Yes. So, from what I what I've seen, you considered only like two atom molecules, yeah. Yeah. But in atmosphere, they are I mean they are like uh, molecules like ozone or methane. So, have you considered uh, making calculations for them, or and is it much uh, more difficult or? Yeah, it's super difficult. Yeah. Okay. And like, I mean, what is the reason? Like, if I like. People from the scattering quantum scattering calculations community. If I tell, if we like, tell that we want to calculate CO N two at room temperature, they like at first thing is like that we are crazy and this is infeasible. And then we like uh, made a huge effort to to first we use some approximations. And now it seems that maybe we should be able to uh, to do it uh, to solve the full close coupling equations. So uh, so the best picture is is, is here. Oh, here, so you can see this, uh, the number of the partial waves we have to consider, the number of the states that are of perturbers that are populated, and something which is not shown here, there is a number of, uh, the, the rotational constant is relatively small, uh, even for, for D atoms, and then the, we have to, in our quantum scattering basis, we need to keep a huge number of, of uh, active molecule levels, and uh, like the, the, the computationally, it like explodes the cost of, of it. Yeah, I, I, so the, 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 the only, like the only more complicated thing is uh, like some rigid molecules that, that has some symmetry, like CH4 maybe, but only rotations. The vibrations are like completely beyond the, our reach. Okay. This is probably the reason why your code is called BIGOS. You should explain in, uh, what does it mean uh, for foreigners. <laughs> binary, binary <laughs> inelastic scattering. Yeah, but it has Polish meaning also. Yeah, that's right? a joke. That's uh, at some end of our meetings, we just said that we will call it because it's very like uh, fancy uh, meal, Polish meal, old fashioned, and difficult to accept by foreigners. Okay, any question? 
If not, let us thank all speakers.